All right, everyone. Keats looks ready to go, and I think it's time we finish up Chapter 5 by fighting Judge Yama for the second time. We'll be finishing up Keats' storyline, so, of course, we're going to need all the advice we can get. And the residents here are standing down next to these benches. Alright, I don't think we actually learned anything new from that guy. Alright, well, in we go. Although, since we're going to be fighting the judge, and we know that we start by needing some destroy elements, so I'm just going to get my folks set up before we go in. So click the annotation if you want to skip exactly the same movie we saw last time. May this humble assembly proceed with all due fairness. Now let us review the events that have transpired. Fetch the mirror. Behold! Oh, wonder of wonders! The mirror of judgment! Let it reveal every dirty detail of the defendant's dark deeds. It occurred on the 4th of November. In the early hours before sun had arisen. The arraigned against all morals and codes and for her own selfish purposes. Carried out a forbidden rite in order to cross the boundary of light and dark. The most unforgivable trespass of them all. Let 
Let us ask the defender. Does the mirror accurately reflect the truth? It, it does. She's she guilty! 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 She's guilty! She's guilty! No! No! For a guilty service! Silent in the court! Let us see what the defendant did once in the netherworld. She hoodwinked the fairy king. Let the fairies to the netherworlds and brought confusion and chaos. No, I, I never intended that. I only wish to see my mother. She did do that. What? What about the verdict? Someone, please, please help me. Let the ruling be heard. Excuse me, but I'd like to interview the defendant. So yeah, pretty much exactly the same thing, except the judge banishes Ellen instead of Keats in this version because Keats is the one who's going to be fighting him. And the fight proceeds very similarly, except this time, I know what I'm doing, and I'm Keats. Keats has good destroy element attacks. So for example, I can close the distance with Bowley dead, and then one or two hits from Gadierg is enough to take out the mirror. That's as difficult as his first phase gets, really. So I'll just kinda hang out in the center, attempt to target the right mirror, and I can destroy them much more easily than Alan ever could. And I even managed to get really lucky with some of these close scrapes with the birds. So once again, it would be nice if one of those... You know, if I can break the mirror, it's on the far side of the room, but I got a 2 out of 3 chance it'll be one of the two that are next to each other. Of course. But yeah, it's this fight, I think, that most shows the difference between the two characters in terms of how good their folks are. For some reason, I thought maybe if I stood in the exact center, they'd miss me. But no such luck. All I gotta do is block or dodge and the mirrors go flying around and then... Didn't even have to wait for him to spit birds out, I could just break the mirror right away. I have no idea how that managed to get through my shield. But, 
This is why I brought Broombear along. So I don't actually have to get close to the mirrors in order to finish taking them down. And just like that, the first phase is done. Of course, Keats doesn't have any good long-range slash attacks. You know, he's got Baither. So I'm going to put on one, one short-range slash attack. And then one fire attack for short range and one for long range. I think that's probably the best mix of attacks that I'm going to get. Of course, he starts with this stupid attack and drains all my MC right from the start, so I've just got to make sure to keep my distance and dodge when he charges, because that's really the attack that'll destroy you. And now, something I figured everybody probably wanted to see. Me attacking the judge with a Christmas present. You know what they say, the staff in the afterlife just don't appreciate the amusement. But this is the pattern that's going to continue for the rest of the fight, more or less. You can probably tell the fight's going a lot faster with Keats than it did with Ellen. In both phases. And again, a lot of that comes down to actually knowing what it is that I'm doing, so I don't have to figure it all out as I go. I know this guy's patterns inside and out, and I've got good folks for attacking with all the relevant elements. Except maybe Slash, if you're thinking about you know, being able to attack from a distance, I could use Baither. But I have a feeling that if I were at a decent range to make Baither actually worth it, it'd just miss because it's shot's curve. Grab bag is perfectly fine for the slash element. And we're done. That was the fight. And off she goes to face her judgment. I just want to see if these guys have anything new to say now that I've beaten the judge. Yeah, so when we played as Ellen, we got to see her judgment. Now we get a bit more of an explanation into what happened.
Sakitz at least gets to return to the real world before finishing the chapter. But, of course, I've got people to talk to. Poor girl, she can't remember the rhyme still. But we've heard it now, so we know all the words. Oh, actually, I forgot to go talk to the pub master. I'll get him after. Everyone's still worried about Ellen, and of course, I don't think we know enough to be able to reassure them, really. I mean, where is she? Well, that's quite a change of tone from when we did the necrophobia quest as Ellen. Remember when he was saying, people shouldn't concern themselves with death? Anyway, I went looking around for a while before I realized I hadn't found O'Connell yet. He's camped out at his usual perch near Ellen's place. I'm glad we got that established. So it's off to sleep, wait until nightfall, and then go behind the ruins. Of course, by this point, I was so excited to get to the end of the chapter, I completely forgot to check out the pub and see if any of the Half-Lives had anything new to say. If there's anything interesting there, I'm sure I'll be able to cover it later. For now, we already know how to open the ruins at will, so let's just go ahead and do that. Actually, that portrait... Yeah, again, it's in our memento list, but doesn't actually seem to be a memento. Hmm. 
And the silver medallion still opens the ruins, same as ever. It's one theory that I was kind of surprised nobody brought up in the thread was that if the Netherworld is all in Ellen's head, maybe she was the hag the whole time. But nobody seems to think she actually committed the murder 17 years ago, so nobody probably thinks she's committing the murders today either. And we'll get answers to those questions next time in Chapter 6. See you then.